What's good everyone? Welcome back to the channel and this is my weekly running and training vlog and I just realized that this is the 34th episode of this weekly running and training vlog. I cannot believe I've been doing this series for 34 weeks but if this is your first time seeing me, this video is where I want to hear from you. I want to hear about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes and I want to hear about your setbacks. I have actually had a pretty good week of running, mainly because I was able to get out of town and run in some new places and I raced. But we're going to get to my training in just a second. But while you're watching this, write in the comments. Let me know how your week of running went. Okay, I've got two things I want to talk to you about today. The first is a recently published study I found in the Journal of Sport and Health Science. Now, I'm just going to put this up front, even though this is a recently published study, the shoes that the study was referring to kind of dates it. But the study's title is the metabolic cost of level uphill and downhill running in highly cushioned shoes with carbon fiber plates. So in a nutshell, they were comparing a plated shoe against a non-plated shoe. And we've all seen the numbers. We know there are benefits to carbon fiber plated shoes. In fact, even the name that Nike gave to the original carbon plated shoe, the 4%, was because those shoes make you run 4% faster. Or they reduce the energy output by 4%, I forget which exactly it is. But either way, this study looked at the Vaporfly 4% and the Nike Streak 6. So both Nike shoes. If you hadn't heard of the Nike Streak, it was a wildly popular shoe. So before the 4% came out, all the Nike athletes, loads of recreational runners, they were all using the Streak series for their races. A super light, super responsive shoe. But then of course the 4% came out and changed the game. So this study looked to measure the 4% against the Streak 6. The study wanted to look at the metabolic cost of running uphill, running downhill, running on level ground to see if that differed. I would imagine they wanted to know if perhaps running uphill and running downhill, perhaps that carbon fiber plate didn't work as well as it does on level ground. So even though it's got that name 4%, maybe it changes when you're running uphill or running downhill. And if it does, maybe there's some marathon courses that would better suit a shoe that doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. So even though I just put all that out there that they may have been thinking that there was a lower metabolic costs when running uphill and downhill, the null hypothesis was that it would be the same. That is, when running on level ground, let's say you save 4% of your metabolic cost, you would also save 4% running uphill and running downhill. So the study used 16 competitive male runners. Each of those runners ran six five minute intervals. So they ran three different grades, so downhill, level, and uphill in two shoes. Two times three is six. I'm also available for math tutoring. The researchers measured the submaximal oxygen uptake and carbon dioxide production during minutes four and five. And for that, they calculated the metabolic power for each shoe and level combination. So the results, and this is probably gonna come at no surprise, but the researchers found that on level ground, the 4% resulted in a 3.83% metabolic savings. Is there a better way to say that? On level ground, the metabolic power was 3.83% less in the 4% than it was in the streak six, right? I think that's better. And I was actually surprised to see this number. 3.83 is very close to 4%. So it's just, it was nice seeing that number being reinforced. But here's what was surprising. Well, perhaps not surprising, but here are the results. When running uphill, the 4% resulted in a 2.82% metabolic savings over the streak six. And when running downhill, the 4% resulted in a 2.7 metabolic savings over the streak six. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So across the board, downhill, flatland, uphill, the 4% still results in a shoe that costs you less metabolically speaking. You're still gonna be putting out less power when you're running the 4% over the streak six, whether you're going up, down, or flat. So when I first opened this study, I was definitely hoping that there was gonna be something sensational. I was really hoping that the non-plated shoe might pull ahead in some area, whether it was uphill or downhill, I, I didn't know. But it turns out that no matter what you're running, uphill or downhill, the carbon plated shoe is going to cost you less, metabolically speaking. Oh, and as far as the inclines for the up and the downhill, they were both 3%, plus three for going up, minus three for going down. So if you are on the edge of reaching some kind of goal, perhaps a Boston qualifying goal, it looks like a carbon plated shoe is gonna be a pretty good bet. Now, of course, there are other studies out there that look at the different metabolic savings through other carbon plated shoes, and this is only looking at the Vaporfly 4%. So, you know, it's a couple years old now. But to be honest, they haven't made any huge strides past that 4%. And you better believe that if there was a shoe that gave us 5% metabolic savings, we'd have heard about it. So I don't know, perhaps this is telling me that I should be training in a shoe like the Streak 6, but then racing in a shoe like the 4%. What do you think? Do you train in a plated shoe and then race in a plated shoe? How often do you use a plated shoe in your training? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, one more thing I wanted to talk to you about before we get into my training week and I just give you a rundown of my days and what I did. We got a new running world record to tell you about. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna link to the study and I'm gonna link to the news article about this next thing I'm gonna tell you about in the comments below. If you wanna read a little more about the study, the link's down there. Check it out. 
after you're done watching. Oh, and of course, if you're getting any entertainment value at all from this video, it would be hugely appreciated if you hit that thumbs up button. It's just a great way to help me, help the channel, kind of shows me that you're enjoying this. And of course, if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. Okay, onto that world record I was referring to, Julia Hawkins. Have you ever heard of that name? Well, she just ran 100 meters in one minute and three seconds. And guess what, guys? She's 105 years old. This woman, Julia Hawkins, she just destroyed all your excuses. She just destroyed all your excuses about feeling old, about not wanting to get up, about not wanting to go out for your run. At 105 years old, she just ran 100 meters race. Oh, and her nickname around her community is Hurricane. She's blazing fast and she'll mess you up. I love this lady. There's one more amazing thing about Julia Hawkins that we all need to know, we need to pay attention to, and that's her attitude about this enormous achievement. When asked if she was impressed by breaking that record, she said, no, not really. She said she said too many other great things in her life. And that race, that giant achievement was just a drop in the bucket. Guys, I think we can all take a lesson from that. While we may go out there and we may run races and go for our runs every day, it reminds us to stay focused on what's really important. So guys, while I want you to be proud of yourself and I want you to tell me about your runs and I want to celebrate you, I also want you to stay focused on what's really important the rest of your life. Running is like a garnish. It makes everything better. All right, guys, I had a pretty good week of running this week. It started off on Monday. Now, okay, let me just back up. This week was gonna be a little different because I was traveling. I was having to move some workouts around. I knew I had a race, but I still had some goals for my running during the week. So my week started off on Monday with 10.5 miles. During that 10.5 miles, I had to move my Tuesday workout to Monday because I was traveling on Tuesday. And my workout for Monday was two times three miles with one mile recovery in between. And the three mile intervals, the two times three mile intervals were to be run at just under marathon pace. So a little bit quicker than marathon pace. And of course I adjusted it for the temperature, but it was a uh, it was a great workout and I was really happy to knock that out on Monday. If you've been following the channel, you know that I was in New York for the middle of the week and on Tuesday, I ran 10.23 miles around Central Park. That was a that was a really great run. It was gorgeous. There was a heat wave going on, so it wasn't as cold as I was expecting or would have liked. But you know what? I think when it comes down to it, I'd rather complain about the heat than complain about the cold. Wednesday was uh, Wednesday was an epic day. I had a really good time on Wednesday. So I ran a total of 24.67 miles, and that started off with me running with my daughter Michelle. We ran around Central Park. Then we met my other daughter Libby in Times Square. From there we did a tour around the southern end of Manhattan. Maybe you've seen the video I put. There was a lot of stopping and starting, and 24 miles was a bit longer than I thought I was gonna run that day, but I had a great time. It was it was excellent practice for time on my feet. Now my daughter Michelle does have a 50 mile race coming up, so that was one of her long runs. And of course, I have a marathon coming up in about another month, so I needed to knock out a fairly decent long run. And of course, running around and seeing all the sights was just a real blast. Thursday was a travel day. I was traveling home, so I did nothing that day. Now, whereas Wednesday was usually my day off. I just moved it to Thursday because that's how it fit. That's what we have to do. Sometimes we have to shuffle things around to make them all fit in a running scheduling game of Tetris. Friday was a nice and easy eight miles. And towards the end of those eight miles, I did do 10 30 second pickups with 30 seconds recovery in between just to get those legs turning over. Friday, okay, wait, let me just skip ahead. I did have a race on Sunday. So when I looked at my weekly mileage and kind of calculated where I was at, I noticed then on Saturday that I was in danger of going a little higher than I like to go on my weekly mileage. So that made me pull back a little bit the day before my race on Saturday and I ran 5.2 miles and on this run I did six one minute intervals with one minute recovery in between and during those intervals I was just picking up my pace again getting my legs turning over trying to remain fresh remain fresh because Sunday Sunday was race day so I started off that morning with a one mile warm-up so just kind of taking it easy kind of Picking up my knees, kicking my heels, you know, picking up the pace a little bit during that mile just to kind of get warmed up. Then I ran a half marathon. Actually, my watch measured 13.2 or one of them measured 13.19, so it was just a tad long. Now, I'm not going to go into the half marathon right here. I will have the half marathon video coming out in just a couple of days. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that right now so you don't miss the video. Oh, and hit that bell icon so you get sent an email notification every time I drop a new video. The, the race video is gonna be good though. I'm excited to put that together. I haven't even started, so I'm fingers crossed I can get it done for Wednesday morning. So we put that whole week together and I actually had a pretty good week. I topped out at 72.86 miles, which is a bit over 117 kilometers. Now, because I was away from home so much, and of course yesterday I raced, so I didn't go on the Peloton, did only knock out about 53 miles on the Peloton, which is a shade under 86 kilometers. So yeah, not too much on the peloton, but it was nice to have a break from doing something extra. Just 
focus on the running because 72 miles is actually a pretty big week for me. And in the name of injury prevention, I really don't like to get too much above that. Well, that's me. And don't forget to tell me about you. Write in the comments below about your week of running. I really want to hear about it. And be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.